what is the treatment for COPD? So what medications can we use to treat these patients? Well, the medications that are used to treat COPD are broken kind of into two separate groups. Those that open up the airways, called bronchodilators, and those that help with the swelling and inflammation in the lung, called inhaled steroids, inhaled corticosteroids, or there's this other class called PDE4 inhibitors, phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitors. That's a pill and should only be given in patients with certain symptoms of COPD, coughing a lot of mucus up every day, that have had recent exacerbations, things like that. The mainstay of therapy for COPD is really the bronchodilators, because the air tubes are narrowed, and to be able to open those up is really will make the patients feel better, and also many of them are approved to help reduce that risk of exacerbation of COPD. There are lots of different bronchodilators. Some are the short, quick relief ones that should not be used all the time, but when, you're, when the patient's having trouble breathing. Then there are ones that are scheduled, should be used every single day, regardless of the symptoms, especially in patients with a lot of shortness of breath or cough with COPD. And then there are combination agents that have the bronchodilators as well as the inhaled steroid. And those should always be given together. You should never just give an inhaled steroid alone. So you can give a bronchodilator alone, the two of them together, but not the inhaled steroid alone. A lot of my patients, they use these nebulized medications every six hours. They even get up at nine to use the nebulized medications. And they came and told me, you know, this doesn't work. I'm going to relieve my symptoms right away, but then four, six hours later, I'm going to be short-winded. So when should we use in this short-active, and what has changed in the management of COPD that has had very significant impact in relation with bronchodilators? It's a really important point. We used to just treat the symptoms, just treat people with either the short-acting puffers or these nebulized medicines as you're talking about. And it's really important not to do that. It's really important to treat the long symptoms and so schedule the medications every single day, the long-acting ones. The short-acting still should be used when the tr patient has trouble breathing or is having acute symptoms, but it really shouldn't be taken on a regular basis and certainly not getting up in the middle of the night just to take the medications. We know that that doesn't help anymore. So it's a surrogate of disease control could be how much of the use of the short-acting bronchodilators? That is true. The more symptomatic, the more symptoms you have, then the more they'll be using their inhaler. And so the more they use the inhaler may show that they actually do have trouble and may need to add on more of the long-acting medications. So you mentioned about a pill to treat COPD. Uh, so what is it and when do you give that uh, pill? So the pill is that PDE4 inhibitor, the long name that I, that I told you. And it actually is one that is reserved for people with pretty bad lung function. So the FEV1, less than 50% of predicted. Ones that have bronchitis, so chronic bronchitis, meaning that they cough up mucus or phlegm at least every day for three months for a couple of years and those that have had a lung attack or acute exacerbation within the last year. We really reserve that pill for that type of person because it does have some side effects that can be problematic and we know that it doesn't help like the bronchodilators do. So basically this is a subgroup of individuals have been identified that are most likely to benefit of having this additional therapy on top of other medications. Absolutely, and the main reason is because it reduces their chances of having exacerbations in the future. That's really what it helps with.